So I've got a question for you today. The question is, how do you talk to yourself? Is it kind? Would you say the things that you say in your head to yourself or about yourself? Would you say those things to another person or to a friend of yours? Or would you be afraid or embarrassed to say those things because you use language that is at least at times unkind or harsh or judgmental? If so, uh, number one, you're not alone. <laughs> Most of us do this from time to time. But if you do this um, and it's hard for you, this video is for you. I'm Dr. Kit Slies. I'm a life coach and licensed psychologist, and I'm here to inspire perfectionists and anxious achievers to feel calm and confident while holding clear boundaries. And one of the ways that we are going to foster that calm confidence within is through self-compassion and being kind to ourselves. And it's also important to be kind to ourselves if we're going to hold boundaries, because how do we know what boundaries we need to hold for ourselves if we're not being kind with ourselves and understanding what our true needs are? So this inner self-talk that we're going to talk about today, this self-kindness, self-compassion is really important for all of those things. First step in kind self-talk is a little bit of a self-assessment. Just building that awareness and recognition. So those even those questions that I asked at the beginning of the video, like how do you talk to yourself? Recognizing if the language that you would use with yourself is language that you would feel comfortable with using somebody else. Taking stock of are there moments when you tend to be less kind to yourself? Um, or is this an inner an inner sort of dialogue that you that is running for you and it's pretty unkind all of the time? A lot of the perfectionists and anxious achievers that I work with tend to be meaner and less kind with themselves in moments when they're judging themselves because they've done something wrong in their mind the thing that they've done that they have done isn't perfect it doesn't meet a standard and in a way the self-criticism um is how a lot of perfectionists they use it misguidedly as a way to self-motivate and they think i if i'm not unkind and kind of mean to myself to like you know, hey, why didn't you do this thing? I can't believe you. You're so lazy. Get your act together. I can't believe you made this mistake. What were you thinking? Like that kind of language. They mistakenly think that that's it is what motivate them. But a, a lot of times they come to see me because that creates uh, an unhelpful level of anxiety or even depression. Um that isn't motivating, it actually makes them want to give up or they just feel very overwhelmed, right? So take stock for yourself of when do you notice that? And this is not an invitation to judge yourself for using this kind of language with yourself. It's just an invitation to come back with some factual, I do this a lot, I do this sometimes and in these circumstances. And it also is an invitation to just begin to notice it because that is the first step in changing. If you are not aware, if you're not aware of when you're doing this to yourself, there's not an opportunity to do something different. So again, this is not an invitation to judge yourself in those moments. This is an important part of the process of change. Self-awareness is a key to change. So once you begin to build that awareness in, within yourself. The next step is to cultivate kindness. And what I mean by cultivating it is to understand what we're even talking about here. So we're not applying any concepts yet. We're just beginning to 
build some more awareness about like, okay, there's language that I use is unkind. Well, what does it even mean to be kind to myself? And we are talking about a particular kind of kindness called self-compassion. So let's unpack what we mean by self-compassion because it's a really important concept. So self, obviously we're referring to ourself and we're using compassion. Compassion comes from the Latin root word, I'm not gonna pronounce it right, compati, meaning to suffer with. So let's think about that for a second. You're like, Kit, why are you even talking about suffering? You're just, I'm just being using this unkind language. Well, it's because, <laughs> and I'll go back to my perfectionists in particular, who are un who are not kind when they've made it like some mistake, right? There is no inherent suffering when we make a mistake. When we do something wrong, um, when we do something in the way we didn't intend it intend it, there is no inherent suffering. But when we self-flagellate, when we self-criticize, think about that. That creates suffering. So we have to acknowledge the fact that we are suffering and we have to acknowledge the importance of suffering with, sitting with ourselves in that suffering. Kristen Neff is a researcher who talks a lot about self-compassion and she talks about treating others like how you treat others and applying that to how we treat ourselves in these moments of suffering. And there's three components that she talks about that are essential for self-compassion or sitting with our own suffering. So the first component is kindness as opposed to judgment. And what we mean here about this kindness, if you think about, um, again, how you're treating yourself in those moments of suffering or those difficult moments when you feel like you've made a mistake or whatever the moment is that you are being hard on yourself, criticizing or judging somebody else Criticizing or judging somebody who is suffering is not kind, but also turning away from suffering is not kind. So it is kind to look toward, to look toward suffering, to see it. If you think about how you would be with a friend, if they were having a difficult moment for whatever the reason, you might feel uncomfortable and you might want to turn away from that, but you know that that's not kind. So part of this is building some, compass some capacity for the discomfort that we feel in those moments and that suffering feels uncomfortable, okay? So we're talking about kindness that turns toward the suffering and that isn't critical or judgmental. And turning toward, this kind of con connects to um, Dr. Neff's a second component of self-compassion, which is recognizing that the common human humanity rather than isolating. So when people come to see me uh, for therapy, they're often coming to me with beliefs that they are alone in the way that they're feeling. They are alone in their suffering somehow. They think sometimes they think they're crazy for the way that they're talking to themselves when they're being hard on themselves. Um, when the reality is that all humans suffer we are all imperfect and flawed. And if you are being hard on yourself or suffering in some way, you are not crazy. You are absolutely normal. So you get to recognize this. And when we can shine the light on the suffering, either by just in your, in your internal dialogue, recognizing, okay, I'm not alone in this, all humans feel this way or some version of this way or by shining the light on it by talking to somebody that you trust who's going to receive you or to a therapist okay by shining the light on it in those ways those difficult feelings that come with suffering they dissipate 
And when you're talking to somebody too, we're also talking about two nervous systems that are meeting and there's this resonance, this regulation that goes on there. Um, so that's the second piece here is recognizing common humanity and to trying not to isolate, whether you're doing that with your internal dialogue or by connecting with the actual other human being who can receive you. The third component that, that um, Kristen Neff, Dr. Neff talks about with self-compassion is that it needs what's what she calls a mindful approach. She talks about this as being balanced. It, we're, this means that we're neither suppressing the suffering nor are we exaggerating it. We're not going out and saying, oh my gosh, this is so painful and I need everybody to kind of look at me and my suffering. No, it's about you also taking some ownership and responsibility for your feeling, definitely seeking comfort if that's what you are needing. But a mindful approach, this might mean stepping outside of your situation for a, a moment to take a different perspective. I like to ask the question, will the thing that is causing suffering, um, and remember the part that's causing suffering is the story that we're telling about it. It's not the, usually the thing itself, right? But the suffering that you're experiencing, will this thing matter in a day? Will it matter in a week, six months? What about a year or five years? Or will it be even a blip in your memory? Will you even remember it at all? So you can kind of get outside of the perspective that way. And I also, in taking a mindful approach, I like the mindfulness concept of being an objective observer. So I like I like to um, have folks use the language, and I try to use this language for myself. I'm noticing that I am feeling blank. You fill in that blank with an emotion or a body sensation. Oh, I'm noticing that I'm feeling some suffering. I'm noticing that I'm feeling pain associated with this moment. I'm noticing that I'm feeling tightness in my chest or my stomach or tension in my shoulders. When we use that language that uh, we are observing the feeling in, in ourselves rather than overly identifying with that feeling and growing the feeling maybe out of proportion to what the situation calls for, and there's really cool research also that just looks at our brains and how when we become the objective observer of these quote unquote difficult feelings, anger, sadness, anxiety, when we observe them, um, the part of our brain where a lot of these emotions stem from the amygdala, um, that part quiets down as our prefrontal cortex comes online and it's communicating um, with the amygdala, we think through our anterior cingulate cortex. That's not all of those little bits and pieces aren't matter. But what's, what, what matters is that the part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, that is this thoughtful, um, it's the thinking, planning part of our brain, the rational part that's able to kind of think through a situation that comes online and it quiets down the part of our brain, the amygdala, which is like that's where our fear response stems from. And that's where we kind of, um, it's a very reactive part of our brain that is responding to perceived threats. Um, but sometimes that perceived threat can be the way that we're talking to ourselves, right? So, so this mindful balance approach, it also calls up to being with the suffering. We're not ignoring it, but we're not overemphasizing it either. So all of Dr. Neff's components require a sitting with the suffering. You know, that kindness piece requires acknowledging that we're suffering. The humanity piece asks us to recognize that we all suffer. Let's sit with that for a moment. And that mindfulness piece also, we're sitting with, we're allowing ourselves to be with the suffering so that we can move through it with self-compassion. Okay, so... Remember, step one was self-assessment. Step two is to think about what does this even mean, this kindness, self-compassion. Um, and we talked about that a little bit. And now that you have those components, the final step, the third step, is to put it all together and to begin to actually change the language that you use with yourself. 
So you're going to notice that you're being hard on yourself or unkind. You're not going to judge yourself further for using harsh language. But even if you do, you can still go to this third step here, which is to just gently notice and invite yourself to say something different. What would you say to a friend who is suffering? And I'll give you some ideas. And you can try them on for size for yourself and see what fits and what doesn't. You might say, I'm here for myself, even though this is hard. Or I'm just trying to be kind, or I'm just trying to be gentle, or I'm just trying to be loving with myself. This is a really good one for, perfe for perfectionists because we're not saying that you are gentle or kind or loving. We're just saying that you're trying in this moment. And quite frankly, it's okay if you're kind of failing a little bit. Okay. Um, how about this one? Even though I'm in pain, I will get through this. Or you can try making a mistake or doing this thing that felt wrong or bad or whatever it was, was just that it was a mistake. And with kindness to myself, I'll either fix that mistake or I will try something different next time. And it's okay because as humans, we're all learning and growing. One's a little bit long. Um, or what about this one? I am remembering that I am not alone. In this moment, I'm remembering that other people suffer and make mistakes. And I'm allowed to make mistakes and feel these feelings because I am human. Oh, try those on for size. Take a deep breath. Breathe it in. Soak it in. How does that feel? Notice that these, um, the language that we're using is not positive affirmations that don't feel true. There is a time and a place for positive affirmations, but when we're suffering, if we're feeling sadness, fear, anxiety, if we're telling ourselves something that doesn't feel true, because those are, those are emotions that we're typically feeling when we're responding to, again, like a perceived threat in the environment. So if we're telling ourselves something that doesn't feel true, that can create more resistance and suffering. Because for example, you're, um, if you go straight to, I am I am strong and powerful in this moment, if you're not actually feeling those things, your brain might, who's in this protective self-protection mode, it might start arguing with you about why you're not strong and powerful. And now you are further in this spiral of unkind, mean language. You're gonna get meaner and nastier with yourself. So don't go straight to a positive affirmation. If positive affirmations work for you and they fit for you, that's great. But typically in these moments of suffering, we need to go to self-compassion. And then you might be able to access positive affirmations from there if you can resonate with them and feel that they are true, at least on some level. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you like this video, you can check out more of my videos on self-compassion. And if you like my channel, please subscribe to show your support and comment below to tell me more about what other topics do you want to hear about? Because I want to listen and hear what you want to know about in the world of psychology or coaching and again, cultivating your calm, your confidence, setting boundaries. If you're somebody who really struggles with perfectionism, you are somebody who wants to achieve, but has a lot of anxiety about it. You put a lot of pressure on yourself. What do you want to hear about? Tell me below. Until next time, be kind and gentle with yourself. Bye.